Tubers, welcome back for another adventure today. And what we are going to discuss is voltage regulators. They come in different sizes and shapes, but they all do about the same thing. And there's nothing better than walking up to your all-terrain vehicle that after the wire harness turns into a spaghetti mess that you could kind of sort your way through it and have it start right up. So, on this all-terrain vehicle, we already went through. We got it to spark, right? We hooked up the 12-volt ignition system to this thing, and it actually came with a 12-volt ignition system, which is always good. So, anyway, we got that going. We got the starter circuit going, right? We had the little push button here. We got all that working. So, what's left to do is to make sure that your battery's getting charged. If your battery's not getting charged, you're in trouble, right? You'll get it started, you'll get out into the middle of nowhere, it'll stall. This one happens to have a Kickstarter on it, though it's not put in such a situation that it would be easy to use. This one is also a hand clutch, so I guess you could kind of roll it and get it started. But, this one also needs 12 volts, so if you're not charging the battery, if you rode it around long enough that the battery you had on there died, you're walking, right? You're pushing it home, dead battery and all. So let's show you how to hook up a voltage regulator and get some charge into your battery. Here are two typical voltage regulators. I stole them from the wire harness there. And you could see they have a few different wires coming out of them. Typically, not always, right? White and yellow. Right, these go out to the stator, and this is where the AC power comes into the voltage regulator. The voltage regulator will rectify the AC power, turn it into direct current, um, not pulsing any longer, and that will go out and charge your battery. How does it go from here to the battery? The red wire goes to the positive, the green goes to ground. This wire harness, same thing. This has two yellow wires. They come from the stator and go in. In the case of this one, um, right, one yellow, <laughs> one white. This one just uses two yellow wires instead. And once again, green wire goes to ground. Red wire goes directly to the battery, positive. Typically, there is not a fuse between the voltage regulators and the battery. Typically not. Um, these things don't put out all that much current, 5 to 10 amps. Um, so, you know, I guess they're not worried about something strange happening and, you know, backfeeding the power and burning up um, your wire harness or anything. I'm sure I'm going to get a note saying, hey, Harvey, mine only has three wires. Well, and that could be because when you bolt this up against the frame, that's where ground comes from. So if you're missing a green, sometimes also black, right, you'll know that the ground is coming directly from the unit. Sometimes um, the inputs, one of them could be pink. Sometimes one of them could be white. And sometimes you can have yellow, white, and pink that means you got a three phase um, I don't recommend wiring two phase regulators up to three phase and three phase regulators up to two phase um, they might function but it's just it's just not not good right so let's just keep with that so now you know how to wire them and what we're going to do is we're going to put both these in the circuit and see if they work remember this wire harness is completely butchered up so the trouble you can have is one of these might be dead the other thing we're going to do is i happen to be up at my favorite surplus place and I picked up a box of these. I looked up the number. It turns out these are Yamaha voltage regulators. Okay. And um, just to go through the wiring diagram, they got green and white, 
green and white. It turns out those two take in the uh, stator power. And then you got red for the positive and black with a white stripe. That one's ground. It goes to the negative on the battery. Whenever I say ground, think also of negative on the battery. Anyway, so we're going to get these things wired up and we'll see what happens. So I went through the trouble of wiring this voltage regulator in and it is dead. So I went to the wire harness and I found another one. And we're going to put this one in, see if this one's alive. Um, dead components when it comes to the China stuff, not surprising, especially if you're dealing with a wire harness that's all messed up, right? Somebody is not riding the ATV with the messed up wire harness for some reason, and it might be reasons, like dead battery because it's not charging could be one of the reasons. All right, the voltage regular, regulator is wired in, right? White to pink, yellow to yellow, green to ground, red to positive. And I'm just going to give this thing a quick start, and we'll see what it wants to do. Let me set the choke. Here we go. Power on. And hit the old little switch here. This guy, um, <laughs> this guy's charging the battery. I'm waiting for it to stall. I... Oh, good, it turned off. Normally, when you have a voltage regulator in, they're putting enough power where it'll uh, self-energize. It'll, it'll power up the uh, CDI and it'll run. So I got a deal on like <laughs> 50 of these Yamaha voltage regulators. Um, I just ended up with this whole box and I'll talk about those later. Anyway, I wired it in just to see if it would work, right? Red, hot. They have black with a white stripe that's ground. And then they have two green wires with, um, with white stripes. And my assumption on that is those are the two AC inputs. So if you turn on the magical voltmeter and the power, see we get about 12.72. And if we start up this rig, now that we have the handy button and all, Power goes up to 14 volts. So we can see the voltage regulator works. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video on how to wire up a voltage regulator. And this is going to stop on the wiring videos, the all terrain wiring videos for a little while but then what I want to do is I kind of want to show you the universal wire harness and to that end you can basically buy a wire harness um, that goes to your typical 110 cc 125 cc the GY6 you know any of these and you could actually easily install it on any all-terrain vehicle so what i've done is i've ordered two of them i like to have current models in my hot little hands when i go through this discussion that way i could show you guys the links on ebay and i'm going to show you how easy it is to wire it up your typical china made ATV wire harness with the pulse generator starting solenoid 
CDI, though it's the wrong kind of CDI, and everything else, switches, key switch, the whole bit, they only go for about 30, 35 bucks. So if you could take one of those and add a couple of components to it and use it on absolutely everything, and you already have the, the connectors and all that stuff available, um, if I can show you guys how to do that, I'm sure I'm going to bring a whole load of these back to life. And the only wires you have to hook up the mot to the motor are the um, two AC wires from the stator that eventually charge your battery. You need the pulse generator. You need ground. Obviously, you need to hook up to a battery, right? And from there, you can hook up your headlight if you want to or not. And some of the other stuff if you want it or not. But you don't need to, right? So for a few wires, you can universally use that in the future. And once again, I'll show you guys how to do that. That way, uh, that way we could talk about it. Anyhow, I'm talking too much and I should end this video. But just quickly, this is the kind of stuff that goes wrong when you get a huge amount of snow. Like that engine is covered right and I have the intake covered and everything's good but you see how much the snow built up around it if I get another snowstorm on top of this right chances are there'll be enough um, snow that gets on top of that engine there and then as it thaws and freezes and so forth some of it will go horizontally and when it goes horizontally it could actually get into the case through a breather or you know, through the exhaust or through something else, right? Then it works its way down the cylinder. Then it's in the case. It could freeze and break the case. Once it gets into the cylinder, you can end up with trouble with rust in the cylinder. So just just be aware of it. Um, we normally don't have two feet of snow on the ground here in the Hudson Valley. But as, as I'm showing it to you here, once again, just picture another foot of snow which would probably be enough to more or less cover that engine and uh, then start start running it horizontally right you'll get into nothing but trouble even on the um even on the 200s next door right you don't realize sometimes the water could get up and around that recoil starter next thing you know it drips in gets behind the recoil starter and you're toasting an engine so I got to get that carport put up. I got to stop fooling around and just get it done. Okay, I want to thank you all for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. I need you all to keep your feet down, your heads up, and get out there and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.